Hey folks and welcome. Fantastic to have you here with us today. Uh, we're going to do a live stream today, something a little bit different. We're out and about. It's glorious sunshine in beautiful sunny Scotland. And it's my pleasure to be here with you today. Today I want to talk about something um, that a lot of people have asked about, a lot of people have thought about, but only a few people actually, I guess, kind of get and understand. And it's the whole thing about blessing in disguise, okay? Now, oftentimes the natural reaction when something happens that upsets us, angers us, frustrates us, you know, that basically isn't what we want, is to naturally get upset and frustrated and angry and wound up and basically not understand that there may actually be something a little bit deeper that's going on here. So I want to tell you a story. There was once a boy and he was very, very young. But when he got old enough, he wanted to go and work with his dad. Now, at this time, they were, you know, basically selling bits and pieces of what they could from a horse and cart. They would travel from one end of the place to the other, and from one town to another. Sometimes they'd be gone quite a lot, a long time. One day, the boy was getting off the cart, and he was getting ready to unload the cart and take everything off. But he hadn't fixed the brake correctly. And what happened was the, the, the actual cart went over the boy's foot, onto his ankle, basically crushed his entire foot, and left him unable to actually walk without assistance. Now, his father was really, really angry initially, but more concerned about his son than anything else. And basically, you know, he got to a point where he was like, well, what am I meant to do? I need my son's help. I need, you know, we've got to make payments. We've got, you know, the payment for the home. We've got this and we've got that. And all these things really started to play on the father's mind. In time, the family, you know, certainly were able to help and able to, I suppose, work around some of the issues that the boy had and work around his limitations and, you know, be very, very flexible with that. And there was a time... Gosh, the boy must have grown up a little bit more, so the boy would have been maybe 15 or 16 now, okay? He's getting around with his crutches and everything, and he's, he's used to the kind of life that he has. But one day, he hears on the, the news and on the TV that war has broken out. And that all boys between 13 through to 18 are being recruited as active servicemen. And that what was happening was generals would lead armies to go through the different towns to knock on the doors to collect the children and take them off to war. A lot of these boys were sent off to what they were called the front line and basically were shot. They, they were basically there either to be the decoy or cannon fodder or, or whatever. And the next day the generals and the army and everything else basically came through the town and are knocking on on the doors and everything, and all these boys are being called up to do their bit. Now, a lot of these boys essentially were taken away, they knew they were never going to see their families again. The family get a knock on the door, and the mother opens the door, and the general says, oh yes, this boy big strapping lad here. He'll be perfect for service. Come, young strapper. Come join us. We'll put you straight at the front line. You'll die a hero's death. This is what they were being told. Upon trying to stand, the general all of a sudden saw the infirmity that the boy had. He couldn't move without crutches. There's no way that he could carry guns or or bear the load of a heavy army bag. And the general said, I'm sorry, son, but you're just not gonna cut it. We can't take you because you'll be more of a liability to us than anyone else. In that one instant, the boy had been saved essentially from certain death and what appeared to be an infirmity, a limitation, a holdback, a setback, 
actually was the very thing that saved his life. Now, as time went on and techno te technology, I'll try that again. Technology grew. They actually developed more suitable ways for the boy to get around. So, folks, the moral of the story is: when we think that something is going disastrously wrong. If we could be patient enough, we may actually see that something really, really awesome and special is about to happen. Now, for years I was asked, you know, when I was a youth worker, when I was a preacher and all sorts of things, well, well you're this, you know, religious dude. Okay, first of all, religion is man-made, you know, my relationship is with God. Well, I'm just throwing that out there. But they said, you know, you're, you're, this, you're this holy man. Um, you know, and yet you've got this illness. I said, yeah. And they said, well, why, why would God give you that illness? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> Expecting me to have the answers. But as time went on and I thought about it more, I just look at the surroundings and the world within which I live and, and reside now. And the way that I look at colitis is, look at all the people that we've been able to help. The fact they've been able to build an art school, the fact I get to work from home, get to choose my own hours, we've always had income coming in, I get to communicate with you guys on a daily and weekly basis, we get to produce some of the most beautiful art, apparently, um, that, you know, is, is, is there, and some of the most diverse art as well. We get to build up a product line, we get to build art from the heart, we get to see so many young men and women, and some older men and women, coming through our art school that are building skills that are going to be with them every single day of their life that is really special to them that's really really um, building their creativity and that they're really passionate about they love the art school and I sit there and think you know if I didn't have colitis I probably still would have been involved with bodybuilding I probably still would have wanted to be involved with television and media and all sorts of other things but there's a big part of me, despite, you know, the health issues and everything else, it's more or less under control. But there's a part of me that's actually thankful because it altered the journey that I'm on humongously. Because of it, I've been able to help and see so many people actually get help with colitis, with anxiety, with, you know, so many other things that are out there. And you just think all that came from something that I would have deemed as almost like a life sentence. So that's what I want to encourage you with today, folks, is if you've got an illness, if you've got something that, you know, people are saying, oh, this is a limitation, this, this, it, you know, it's, you're no good, you're broken, you're this, you're that, you're the other. Let me tell you something, that wherever you're at and whatever you're doing, you can do so much. It just takes some time to actually work things out. And don't expect answers to happen like that and overnight. Yes, we've got the health issues. Yes, we've got, you know, other things that are going on. But these days I actually try and see all the good that's come out of it. So like the boy who didn't get called up for service and got to live, make the most of each day. Because as we said last week, you know, there's only so much time, there's only so many days that we have in our lives. And... You know, someone uh, put on uh, Instagram this morning something along the lines of, you know, about Monday. You might not enjoy, um, or it might not be your favorite day of the week, but every day, you know, above ground is uh, is a blessing or something like that. And it just caught my attention, and I thought, yeah, that's that's uh, that's really cool. So, guys, I hope this has really helped you. Look for the blessings that are in disguise, the blessings that sometimes you may not even notice, and the things that you may not even notice are there. Um, aside from that, have a wonderful, wonderful week. We've got some brand new prints and mini prints that are in at the moment at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com and just click on the shop button and then just head on down to mini prints and you will see them right there. Um, and as I say, have a wonderful week, guys. Stay tuned. Come back with us next week. We've got a brand new show that's going to be coming later on this year, which I've been working on at the moment, called The Artist Heart. It takes place in Italy and... Uh, with six episodes in and edited and finished, and it's a combination of art, music, and uh, travel as well, if I believe correctly. 
Um, and Italy's just gorgeous anyway, we could just do a show about Italy. So, so it's all phenomenal and all fantastic. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care, God bless, and I will catch you soon.